Yesterday, an Indian startup named Atmikul Cosmos Private Limited test fired two semi cryogenic engines. That event was extolled by Indian media. Of course, it was worth mentioning or congratulating. But that led to, you know, several types of reactions. Some people raised the question as to why the ISR, which is India's premier space development and research agency, failed to make a semi cryogenic agent despite researchers for making such an engine going on for at least 15 years. There are people who believe that the bureaucratic bottlenecks or the management of a government sector institution is different from the management of a startup or a private sector company. And it was that difference that helped Atnigul Cosmos Private Limited to manufacture a semi cryogenic engine in a record time. But experts say you look at the scale. While Agnigul wants to put a satellite into a low Earth orbit and that to a satellite with a weight of around 100 kilograms, what ISRO is attempting is much, much bigger in scale. And it is that difference which uh, causes delay in making of a semi cryogenic engine. But you should not forget the fact that ISRO has got much more experience. ISRO has got huge resources. I mean financial as well as, you know, manpower. So I think ISRO perhaps needs to learn many things from this private sector, how a private sector company manages things or visualizes, develops things. At the same time, we need to remember that ISRO has achieved great things. For example, I mean, huge achievements are there in the name of ISR, recorded in the name of ISRO. So you have to balance this, balance between the both. So let's take a closer look into the whole, uh, you know, semi-cryogenic engine puzzle. Welcome to Insights. I am Hari Kumar. For a long time, I myself was wondering why ISRO couldn't, uh, you know, make a semi-cryogenic engine, but at the same time, a private sector company was able to manufacture 3D print a semi-cryogenic engine. So I was also pondering for a while why ISRO couldn't make it. Maybe there are, 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 are different reasons, only scientists can tell about that. But at the same time, I am not forgetting about the difference in scale. ISRO is trying to build a semi-cryogenic engine that is going to provide thrust to a space launch vehicle which will put India's heaviest satellite in a geotransfer orbit. <laughs> so that is around say 35 or 36,000 kilometers away from Earth. But at the same time, what Aknikul semi-cryogenic engine uh, can do is to put a satellite at a low Earth orbit of around 700 kilometers from Earth and that to a satellite of weighing weight around 100 kilograms. So there is difference. So uh, regarding ISRO, the scale is much, much huge, different. So that could be the reason as to why ISRO has not been able to achieve that. But at the same time, I need to mention that this space startup was formed in 2017 or 18. This is what I have read from newspapers. So within seven or eight years, they have been able to 3D print a semi cryogenic engine. They have been able to test fire that. They have been able to get patents of many technologies. So much they have made, so, created so much achievements. But ISRO is no mean organization. You know, they have been able to uh, send a, a mission to, an, to Mars at that showstring budget. ISRO's moon lander landed on the south pole of moon uh, for the first time in Asia. So many 
achievements are have been recorded in the name of isr i'm not forgetting that but at the same time i always used to wonder as to why isr was unable to you know uh, achieve create so many achievements on the front of space launch vehicle when it comes to satellites or spacecrafts isro us achievements could match even the achievements of nasa or european space agency or china's space agency but when it comes to launch vehicles i think isro is lagging behind for example isro's lvm3 which is the you know which is the uh, launch vehicle that can carry the heaviest satellite can carry a payload of only around 4.5 tons so india still depends on european space agency or spacex to put heavier satellites in geo transfer orbits but at the same time when it comes to you know low earth uh, orbit india can india's uh, lvm3 can put even a satellite weighing 6.5 ton india is planning to put a, a us satellite weighing around 6.5 tons in a leo orbit but at the same time you should not forget the fact that we don't have a space launch vehicle that can carry very heavy payloads to uh, geo transfer orbit look at china their long mars rockets are able to put a satellite as heavy as 7 or 8 tons in gto look at spacex or look at nasa it is a bit lagging on that front but i am sure that when it comes to satellites india's achievements or are comparable with any country in the world so this is the primary uh, difference so it means that india has to work on the launch vehicle front much faster and uh, they have to upgrade their technology of course india is working very hard on that front and india has made quite uh, you know laudable achievements on that front for example uh, the semi cryogenic engine project which was launched in 2009 i mean almost you know 16 years ago has made giant strides for example uh, it has the hot bed test article i mean uh, it it is the power head sorry the power head test article uh, has been successfully completed in 2025 this year only they have done two hot tests and uh, sorry three tests and all the three tests have been highly successful and i feel that the project is going ahead as planned and by 2027 isr will be able to make its own uh, you know semi cryogenic engine so this engine is going to power the second stage of lvm3 now lvm3 uses a time tested vigas engine which is a liquid fuel uh, rocket engine at the stage 2 in the stage 3 lvm3 uses a cryogenic engine which is locally made you know so that is a that was a great achievement india didn't help get the help of any other country uh, there was a there was an embargo or a, or some kind of ban by united states after india's nuclear test but despite all those bans or pressure tactics by western agencies ISRO was able to uh, build make its own cryogenic engine so, and uh, afterwards ISRO has been able to you know take forward the development of a semi cryogenic engine also so no doubt about that but at the same time uh, we cannot forget the fact that ISRO takes a lot of time you know huge time there is a delay in that if we are lagging behind then it means that others are marching ahead also so this is a of course a great restraint this puts a restraint on our forward march but when you compare that with uh, compare this attitude with you know private sector companies they are far ahead in efficiency of course i also need to mention that this agnikul made this achievement with the help of isro because all those testing facilities are 
uh, provided by ISRO, ex expert technical guidance is being provided by ISRO. I also need to mention that ISRO is slowly moving away from uh, launching this uh, satellite to the low Earth orbits. Now they have given the technology to uh, Hindustan Aeronautics Limited. So they, is, they are going to do that in future. ISRO is going to focus on research and development activities. That's all in tune with what is happening around the world. For example, you look at NASA. Now almost all the launches, commercial launches are being done by SpaceX. They have transferred the technology for a price, of course. And NASA is focusing into, into research and development activities and providing guidance. That's the secondary stage. And ISRO happily has reached that stage. But at the same time, this is uh, an achievement that still evades, I mean, a making a semi-cryogenic engine is an achievement that still evades uh, ISRO. An agency like ISRO needs to work on that. And I think the achievement of Agnikul once again reminds us about the need for uh, uh, making an, an engine capable of putting a satellite into a geotransfer orbit. I will be back with updates on this issue. Till then, goodbye.